Now, this week's hot trend topic looks at a practice that appeared to have been quite trendy in the BVI in the recent past. Now, depending on how long you've been living in the Virgin Islands, you may or may not have heard several stories of people digging for money. Maybe some people thought they would find the loot left by the pirates who plied their trade on the Caribbean seas a few centuries ago. Retired educator Elmo Stout shared one of these episodes when he hosted a night of Funji music and VI folk stories at the Eileen Parsons Auditorium on Saturday, January 17th. Backed by the original fellows, Stout delivered on his promise of an entertaining evening. The scores of patrons who attended got their bang for the buck as the Funji genius gracefully commanded the crowd's attention and participation with his infinite recollection of decade-old details about various activities around and beyond BVI shores. One of the stories was based on an adventurous dig for money on Little Joss Van Dyke. I could stay here tonight and tell you about 10 different episodes of digging money in the BVI, but only one for tonight. This one, the Obia woman was in charge. I stayed over on Jasper Neck that weekend. I walked at school, went to the place where I stayed. The lady was cooking up a storm. She had two kitchens, ordinary family kitchen, and a big place for special occasions. And I came in, catering, etc. I came in, I, I began to pick a little. She said, no, 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 no. Your food is in the kitchen. She didn't want me to touch that at all. Everything that was prepared was for the sacrificial thing at Little Jasmine Dyke. All the animals killed were white. White cow. White sheep. White goat. White fowl. White duck. Everything had to be white. Those boys smuggled a white cow from St. Croix. <laughs> the only problem, it had a little red in the face. Anyway, the food was prepared. One of the workers carried over to little Jasmine Dyke on a whaler. Then they decorated a smaller boat, a dinghy, with X amount of food and released that dinghy. It went out through the reefs as somebody was steering it. The rest of the food and the rum was put down right there. The workers were eating and the spirits were eating. And the fellows could see it diminishing before their eyes. They're eating, they have eaten, and then all of a sudden, they're going to go to work again, digging the money. When the landowner looked, he saw the Obia woman got in a frenzy. <laughs> he wondered what happened, so he went over and asked, what happened? Now you know great Justin Dyke and little Justin Dyke are separated by a shallow bar. The water could be knee height or a little higher when the tide rises. The Obia woman said to the landowner, the spirit of me giving up the money again. <laughs> they want a soul. The spirits want somebody's life. And with that, the news hit the fellows who were digging the money. Well, they said, foot help the body. <laughs> One member of my band was a young fellow at that time, walking with that landowner, digging the money that night. And those fellows walk on water across from little, <laughs> from little Jason Dyke to great Jason Dyke. When he reached home, all his mother said, I tell you, keep from that man. <laughs> they ran. 
leaving the Obia woman and the land over and little Jasmine Dyke. One fellow, come, come. <laughs> My good friend Tony Martin was a young fellow, you know, in 71. And um, one fellow was lost. They couldn't find him. They didn't find him till about 11 o'clock on the Sunday morning. It was a Saturday night. They found him about 11 o'clock there Sunday morning, and he was up in a tree. Digging gold and little Jasmine Dyke. Thank you. Elmo Stout's night of Funji music and VI folk stories also marked an early start to his January 18th, 70th birthday celebrations. He was presented with a birthday cake on stage.